Terry Barber is a best-selling author and founder of Lighthouse Catholic Media. Jesse Romero is a retired law enforcement officer, a former kickboxing champion with a master's degree in theology. And together, they share a passion for evangelization and PhDs in common sense. It's the Terry and Jesse Show on Immaculate Heart Radio. To join the show, call 888-526-2151. Now here's Terry and Jesse. This is Terry and Jesse Show, your spiritual fitness trainers, Blue Collar Catholic Radio. We have an exciting interview in about 50, on the next segment with Bishop Athanasius Snyder. For those of you that don't know who he is, he's a Soviet-born bishop, so he was born under communism. This, he knows what persecution is. He knows what it is to live under an atheistic regime. Yep. He's a scholar. He's a clergyman. He's an auxiliary bishop of the Archdiocese of St. Mary in Astana, Kazakhstan. He's also written an incredible book. We're probably going to try to get into it. It's called Dominus Est, uh, the, you know, the Lord is Here. And basically what he talks about in that book is about proper devotion and proper worship of the Holy Eucharist. It is phenomenal. Uh, and what he says is not anything different from what I've read. From, from example, like from Dr. Scott Hahn in his book, The Lamb's Supper, I've heard Dr. Scott Hahn say the same thing. I've heard Cardinal Ratzinger say the same thing in the spirit of the liturgy. They basically say, if we get the liturgy right, if we worship God properly, everything else on planet Earth is going to fall in place. But if we don't worship God properly, we're going to continue fighting this culture of death. Terry? Well, and I also want to say Bishop Athanasius is a member of the Opus Angelorum, which I'm a member of. And that's how we were able to connect with him. And he's doing a retreat for the Norbertine Fathers, about 60 priests down in Orange County. But he emailed me and said he would call in at 1115. I'm going to give away something that's a bomb. And what I mean by that is, as you know, I've been involved in Catholic evangelization for almost 40 years. Well, in the 1990s, early 1991, I went up to Northern California to do an interview with Abbot Boniface. He was the last surviving author of the Constitution of the Sacred Liturgy, the Second Vatican Council document, okay? And I interviewed him with a Bob Hutchinson, a, a, a writer, and we asked all these questions about liturgical teachings and what happened after Vatican II. And his point was amazing. Even, even in the Vatican, they were ordering these CDs from us in the 1990s. I haven't talked about this in years, but I'm going to encourage you to pick up a free copy of what Abbot Boniface had to say. I mean, he's dead now. There's no one alive after that. He was the last surviving person. I witnessed to it. And I'm telling you, it'll blow you away. Just call 877-526-2151 to get your copy. What type of questions, Terry, did you ask Abbot Boniface? And tell the audience, he was uh, one of the experts. Paritas, yeah. At, yep. Yeah, he's an, he was a theological expert That's right. at, at the Second Vatican Council, and he <coughs> sat during the sessions on the sacred liturgy. And basically, Terry, you asked him questions. Yeah. What happened? Because the documents are so perfect. Yeah. What happened after the council? That's what you probed, I, right? Absolutely. I probed all those questions because he was on the committees to implement the, the council documents. And he was frustrated with certain people that were on the committee and friends that were, I will, I'll, I'll say Nick Bunini and other names like that. I'm, I said it. Okay. He was upset because they weren't implementing what the document said. I'll just give you one example, everybody. The Second Vatican Council says that we're supposed to know our parts of the mass in Latin. What? That's what it said? Do we know, do we know that? How, how are we going to implement that if we don't have a Latin mass part of the mass being in Latin? Okay, I'm not in management. I'm in sales. I just asked the man the question. He said, Terry, we're supposed to know that. And when the priest turns around and says, the Lord be with you, what is that implying? That he's not facing you. You see, those are the kinds of things you say, Terry, you're radical. Hey, you know what? I just want to know what the documents teach, and I got an eyewitness who a I asked questions, and he gave me answers, and it blew me away. If you want to know what went on 50 years ago from an eyewitness, the only guy that was alive in the 1991 when I went up to his monastery, Abbot Boniface Lukey, you call 877-526-2151. And get the whole three CD set and get an understanding because what, like Jesse said, like what Cardinal Ratzinger said and what Scott Hannes said, if you don't get the liturgy right, you get nothing right. And we're going to talk about the family and the liturgy. Call 877-526-2151 and get your copy.
That's why it'll be a treat if uh, if the Bishop Athanasius Snyder calls yep. up in the next segment. He's giving a retreat right now with the Norbertine Fathers out in uh, in Orange in this in Orange County. Yep. But we're going to be asking him all these questions because his book, Dominus Est, the Lord, the Lord is here. That's what he talks about. And his book, by the way, is so far more than ten thousand copies by Newman House Press. Yep. Uh, according to Newman House Press, it's it's their best seller in twelve years. And I'll tell you why this is important after having read his book and read Dr. Scott Hahn and read Cardinal Ratzinger, The Spirit of the Liturgy, and listening to the tape set that Terry gave. He gave me that set 20 years ago, <laughs> uh, the, the, inter- the interview from Abbot, Abbot Boniface. Yeah. I'll tell you why this is so important, because as I read the Old Testament and the book of Malachi, for example, you see that the, Jews, the Jewish priests were giving God bad worship. They were giving God lame animal sacrifices. And God, uh, Malachi was telling the people, God doesn't like your lame animal sacrifices. God wants the best of what you have. And so I see kind of a parallel today in the Catholic Church because we're the new Israel of God. What I see is that oftentimes we don't give God the best. We give God, you know, something like uh, in the days of Malachi. We give him just lame animal sacrifices. Proverbially speaking, what I'm saying is, we're not giving the Lord the best. And that's what Bishop Athanasius Snyder talks about in his book, Dominus Est. He talks about the fact that, you know what? What we've got to do is give God the best of what we have. We've got to go back to the documents of the church and implement them. Absolutely. And we're looking forward. Abbot, uh, excuse me, the Bishop Athanasius Snyder said he's going to call in at eight at 15 after. So I just want to shift gears right back. Now, when the bishop comes on, we'll talk about his book and about his comments about how to reform back the church and have a more love for the Eucharist, which Fulton Sheen even said that at the Eucharistic Congress in 76 about the de-Eucharization. Uh, Jesse, I want to bring up something that is tied into the liturgy. Yeah, you can't have good family life without good liturgy life, okay? What do I mean by that? We have to understand mom and dad having a marriage that the graces that are there for marriage flow right to the family, right, for the kids. So I know this sounds crazy. Are you ready, everybody? I'm going to open up my catechism to paragraph 1601. If you don't have a catechism, get one, because I'm looking for clarity today. Sometimes I get so many calls after the show, and so does Jesse. What, what's the church really teach about marriage? And I, you know what my answer is always? Open your catechism. This is a sure norm. St. Pope John Paul II said, you got questions? Get a catechism. So paragraph 1601, let's read it and say, okay, I got it. The 1601 says, the matrimonial con- uh, covenant by which a man and a woman, you notice it didn't say a man and a man or a woman and a woman, established between themselves a partnership of the whole of life. It's by its nature ordered towards the good of the spouses and the procreation and education of offspring. This covenant between the baptized persons has been raised by Jesus Christ, the Lord, to the dignity of a sacrament. That's not my opinion. That's what Holy Mother teaches. This is the top of the chain on, the, on trying to get information on marriage. And I want you, our listeners, to understand it's as clear as the nose on my face. Terry, in that section of the catechism, it basically shows the it shows that everything else would be incomplete. That's right. The, se- the secular view of marriage where people are just sexual objects to be conquered and abused, yep. that clearly it, it d- is not elevated nope. to a sacrament. People don't, do, don't become holy, cohabitating or shacking up. You're not conferring grace upon each other. Also, the definition that you gave, that would also discount, Terry, the, the, the Islamic view of marriage for the Quran. That's true. Where a man is allowed four wives and one prostitute. According to the catechism, it's a covenant between one man and one woman. So that would not allow what we see in the Quran or in Sharia law. And, and, and lastly, as you just said it, and the U.S. Supreme Court in this country has legalized marriage between two men and two women. You read the catechism, it doesn't allow for that. So the catechism's definition does not allow for cohabitation, does not allow for polygamy, and does not allow for same-sex marriages. Wow. Period. Wow. Folks, we're hoping that the Bishop uh, Athanasius Snyder from Russia, actually, will be here uh, at, at 15 after the next segment. He sent me an email saying he'll come on, so we're 
He's doing a retreat at the uh, Norbertine Fathers in Orange County. So we're hoping to have him on. But I want to remind you a couple things. One, we're giving away the failure of liturgical reform by Abbot Boniface Lukey. He's the one, the last survivor. I went up personally to interview him in 1991. And I asked him a lot of tough questions about the liturgy right after the Second Vatican Council. Because we all know, I mean, that's not like the cat's out of the bag. We know there was a lot of confusion. Why was there so much confusion? What went on? If you're curious and you want to get a good understanding of where the church is going with liturgical reform, call and get your copies of the complete set at a discounted price or just get the first CD for free. And I'll give you two copies. Call 877-526-2151. Jesse, you're going to be coming to Los Angeles. Am I still correct on that? Why don't you let us know when you're coming in, brother? Yes, I'm going to be at, tomorrow. At, I'm going to be at Holy Family Cathedral on, on Thursday, yes. June 23rd at 7 p.m. I'm going to be talking about to men, three types of men, wolves, sheep, and sheepdogs. That's my favorite man talk. <laughs> on Friday, I'm going to be at Our Lady of the Pillar Church in Santa Ana giving my favorite talk on Jesus. Uh, I like, figure life is short. Anywhere I go, I'm just going to give my best talks. I'm not giving. I'm not giving the B team or C team. I'm giving the best of what I've got everywhere I go. Who knows how long any of us have left on planet Earth? On Friday, I'm going to be talking about who speaks for God. Line up the claimants over at Our Lady of Pilar Catholic Church in Santa Ana. On Saturday, I'll be at the a Long Beach Convention Center with the Sower Ministries, their Divine Mercy Conference. I'm going to be there from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. You can sign up by going to sembrador.com uh, or sowerministries.com. Uh, that's going to be this Saturday. Terry. Well said. We're going to come right back, hopefully, with Bishop Athanasius Snyder. Do not turn that dial. Back to the Terry and Jesse Show on Immaculate Heart Radio. Want to join the conversation? Call 888-526-2151. Now here's Terry and Jesse. Welcome back to the Terry and Jesse show. We always say we're too blessed to be stressed, too anointed to be disappointed. And if hope was money, we'd be billionaires. I promised, hopefully, that Bishop Athanasius Snyder would be able to join us. He's doing a retreat at St. Michael's, and I believe we have the good bishop on the line. Bishop Athanasius Snyder, welcome to the Terry and Jesse show. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Bishop. And I'm just so excited to have you here. Father William Wagner has been my spiritual director for only about 34 years, and I've known him all my life, basically. And we talked about you, and I really was hoping you could join us because we're, we're, uh, we we're talking about uh, right now the sacrament of matrimony, right, directly from the Catechism of the Catholic Church, 1601. And you um, had been talking uh, through the Internet about uh, the survival of the family. But before I do that, Bishop Schneider, could you let our listeners know your background coming from a communist country and an atheistic country? Can you give a little background for those who don't know who you are, please? Yes, I am. I was born in the Soviet Union in Kyrgyzstan mm -hmm. from German parents uh, who belonged to the so-called Black Sea Germans. Mm -hmm who were settled there uh, still in the time of the Tsar. Yes. And uh, they were Catholics. And then after the World War, they were deported by Stalin, these Germans, to forced labor in the Ural Mountains. Mm -hmm. And uh, when they were freed in the end of the 50s, they moved to Central Asia, where I was born. Yeah. So I am very grateful to God that I have been born to a true Catholic family, and so I would say I have received the Catholic faith with the ma mother's milk. It is the greatest grace of my life, which I consider, to have received the Catholic faith from mother and father and grandparents. Bishop, how did you do that? How did you do that in a communist country? I, I read your little booklet, but can you share how you were able to, how the parents were able to pass on the faith when really it had to be kind of underground. Can you share, share that story, please? Yes, exactly, because the family is in the plan of God, a house church, and the family is not a human foundation or a human invention, but a divine. Amen. Since, and since family is a divine foundation, 
the family, the a true Catholic family, is able to transmit the the Catholic faith in all its purity, even notwithstanding the attacks and the persecutions outside. Uh, and so we could. We, we transmitted, we received the faith in the family because we prayed. My mother was my first teacher of catechism. Oh, I love we had it. A good, uh -huh. We had a good Catholic catechism, yes. this of old ones, very clear, formulated, very simple, but basic. And these, cate these formulations of the catechism, of the old catechism, yes. which are very simple, clear, and practical, Mm -hmm. This gives you for all your life Amen. knowledge and and knowledge and f fundament, no? Yes. And this uh, grace, grace, thanks be to God, uh, my mother taught uh, taught us children. We were four in the family. Uh, the catechism regularly. The, this was a very beautiful old German catechism. <laughs> Good. And and then uh, we we spoke in house German and we prayed also German in the house. Uh -huh. And then also my mother taught us very beautiful. We had a nice book, an old German book, which was called the Biblical Stories. Mm. And so all the the all the important events of the Holy Scripture were yes. depicted in beautiful pictures and a little summary. Wow. And so we had also a, a biblical knowledge. We were not scribes and biblical <laughs> scholars, but we were taught the basic events of the Holy Scripture, and this is sufficient. Beautiful. Wow, Jesse. Bishop, then, Bishop, and the Bishop other Snyder. Thing, and the, the third thing is very important. We prayed together. Absolutely. That's critical. Every morning, every morning we, could, we were forbidden to leave the house without <laughs> praying together. I love it. And the same... Uh, in the night before going to sleep, yes. we had to uh, to pray together, commonly in the beautiful. family. Beautiful. Wow, that's beautiful. Bishop Snyder, I got a question for you. This is uh, Jesse. This is a Terry and Jesse show, and we, and we're so honored that you would take time. time to speak to our Catholic audience. Bishop, I see right now as, as I read the, the papers and the internet, it seems to me as if Russia is becoming more Christian. And it seems to me, well, it's very obvious that America is becoming more pagan. Uh, it seems to me as of America, we're starting to go the way of communist Russia. We're starting to feel a, a persecution through legislation. Uh, and, and we're starting to see over in Russia, uh, it's as if Christianity is starting to revive again. Uh, do you see that? Am I right in my assessment or am I wrong? Yes, I am agreeing. Basically, it is a, f uh, a fact we can observe that in Russia, and I also, because I'm living close to Russia, and I have also visited uh, recently, some years ago, also Russia. So you can see in Russia, um, uh, everywhere, uh, building new churches, Orthodox churches, very beautiful and sacred, and and so by with the help of the government even. Mm -hmm. And so, and we know that the Orthodox Church they have the true sacraments. Sure. And even and even they they keep the blessed the most holy sacrament in every church. So our Lord is present there. Amen. And especially Our Lady, they venerate every day Our Lady with a special invocation. The Russian Christians. And so, this is a fact. And also. You can observe in Russia uh, the, the growing of the religious vocations. So they are uh, they are raising new f new uh, monasteries uh, for men for women, and this is also a sign of hope. Even uh, at least exteriorly, it is. Yes, you can observe. Of course, they have their own problems within the Orthodox Church, but it, this is not so. Uh, this is not the the question at stake here, and the other. Uh, fact, we can observe that at least uh, the Russian government publicly uh, protests against the so-called gender ideology. Right. And Very. this is, of course, a positive. Absolutely. Fight. Of course, some some people say, "Oh, this is only tactic and so on," but at least uh, it is positive when at least a, a powerful government has a protest publicly against the. Uh, destruction of the family through the gender ideology. Right. Bishop Schneider, before we go to a break, and then I'd love to have more questions with you, 
But I want to ask you something. I read your little booklet about the Eucharist, the source and summit of the Christian life. That's what Vatican II calls the Eucharist. And I'm a Fulton J. Sheen guy. I love the daily holy hour. And it seems to me, in my own lifetime, Bishop Snyder, correct me if I'm wrong, but it seems that if we don't get the liturgy right, we get nothing right. And so it seems that we have a lot of Catholics, at least in America, my own experience, they, we've, we've used to have 75% of the Catholics even showing up to church back in, say, 62, and now only 25% show up. And I have to ask this. I, I did a survey years ago. How many people believe in the real presence? And I would only get about 5% of the people who really understood the real presence. So it seems like there's a crisis over the Eucharist. Do you agree or disagree? And how can we resolve it if, that is, if, the, if, in, if in fact, there is a crisis? Yes, this is a crisis. We have not to prove this because it is evident. Yeah. And uh, I remember a quotation of Cardinal Ratzinger. Yes. Uh, the late Pope Benedict the Sixteenth. Yes. He uh, made the following statement, more or less. So I am tra- I'm translating from German. Um, on the liturgy it depends uh, the the future of the face of Amen. the church. Wow. On the liturgy depends uh, the, all the, 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 the state of face and so on in the church, more or less. Uh, and so this is true because the liturgy is ex- expressing our first duty which we have, for which we were created. We were created, as we know, for the glory of God, Amen. to worship Him, to mm. adore Him to glorify him. This is our first task. Yes. And all the heaven, the, the angels and so on, they are fulfilling this. And so the liturgy, and also the first commandment, you shall not have other gods, not worship other gods. Yes. Not to, and so on. And so, uh, therefore, this is our first task to pray, to adore, in truth and spirit, as Jesus t- uh, said. Amen. Bishop Schneider... And this is the liturgy, and this is the, the liturgy, the yeah. official... Uh, prayer of the church at, at this prayer of the church the liturgy has to reflect faithfully reflect the purity of faith even the, the even the smallest details yeah. of the liturgy the rites and the gestures the signs and so on the words have to reflect faithfully yes at the truth and the integrity and the beauty of the faith right, right of our Catholic faith. Amen. Bishop and Schneider, therefore, I'm sorry to interrupt you. We have to take a quick break, but I'm going to joke with you. I'm not serious. When Pope Francis is called home, if I was voting, I'm voting for you for our next pope. Okay, brother? <laughs> so, <laughs> Pardon? I, no, I, I said that I'm going to vote for you the next conclave. If you're in there, I'm going to vote for you to be the I'm joking, uh, Bishop. I, I can't vote. I can't vote. <laughs> Folks, you're listening to the Terry and Jesse show. I love to have fun. We have Arch, uh-huh. We have Bishop uh, Athanasius Snyder with us. When we come back, we're going to ask him more questions about the liturgy. Folks, remember, I have Abbot Boniface Lucchi's set, The Failure of Liturgical Reform. You're welcome to pick it up by calling 877-526-2151 or go online to Catholic RC. I want you to have it because you need to understand if we don't get the liturgy right, we get nothing right in the family, in society. And Benedict XVI wrote that book on the spirit of the liturgy. I recommend you look it up from Ignatius to get that. When we come back, we'll ask Bishop Snyder some more questions. Call us at 877-526-2151 and pick up Abbott Boniface CD. Don't turn that dial. We're going to come right back. Back to the Terry and Jesse Show on Immaculate Heart Radio. Want to join the conversation? Call 888-526-2151. Now here's Terry and Jesse. We're back. This is the Terry and Jesse Show, and I am just so blessed out of my socks to <laughs> Me hear... Too. To hear such moral clarity from one of the successors of the apostles, we have we have Bishop Athanasius Snyder. Terry and me have been distant uh, fans and followers of Absolutely. the bishop ever since he wrote that book, Dominus Est, mm-hmm. uh, It Is the Lord. He wrote a book on U- proper Eucharistic devotion and proper Eucharistic reception, and uh, that's when Terry and myself, we've been uh, following the good Absolutely. bishop's interviews and mm. articles that he writes. 
Uh, Bishop, we'd like to, I'd like to ask you a question, uh, and, and this basically is in terms of, of, of the liturgy. Uh, as a Catholic, uh, I know that the Holy Eucharist, it, the, the Eucharist is the heart of the church, and tell me if, if I'm right about this, if the heart is weak, then the whole body is weak. Uh, and what I mean by that, if, if we don't give God the best of what we have, and, and one of the things that a lot of us as lay Catholics we've struggled with, we've seen again, for example, just the, the abuse of the re receiving communion in the hand, the way it contributes to the loss of faith in the real presence, the loss of faith in transubstantiation. It, it oftentimes almost looks like another Protestant service where they pass around a, a, a communion plate and everybody grabs the, 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 the chips or wafers or whatever's in there. So my question is, Bishop, if, if, the, Eucharist, if, if, if the Eucharist is the heart of the Catholic Church and the heart is weak, doesn't that contribute to the rest of the body of Christ being weak? Yes, it is evident, because the Eucharist, as you rightly said, is the heart of the Church. And so, uh, when the Eucharistic liturgy and all the uh, the gestures and prayers and so on which we are making uh, towards the Eucharist is weak. So the faith on the Eucharist become weak and also the church becomes weak. So the heart, when the heart is weak, all the body is weak. So to restore the life of the church, to a, a, a real renewal of the church has to start by the heart of the church, this means by the Eucharistic liturgy, mm. has to start how we, how we receive, how we treat, treat the most holy, which is on this earth. Mm -hmm. This is the, the, the Eucharistic body and, and blood of Christ, our incarnated God. And so we have to show this not only interiorly, of course, the first, um, condition is to receive our Lord in the state of grace with a pure heart. And so therefore we have to go to confession often, frequently. And the second one, the inseparable, is to also to show our interior face with exterior gestures, because human being is a unity of, of soul and body. Yes. And therefore we have to demonstrate and with our body uh, the reverence, uh, the sacredness, the sublimity of the Eucharistic body of Christ. As the Church, all the, the centuries did, and the saints uh, showed us, even when we read the Apocalypse uh, in the Holy Scripture, mm -hmm. we can see that in heaven the angels prostrate themselves uh, Amen. on their face mm -hmm. uh, before the Lamb of God. But every holy host is the lamp of God. The priest is saying to us immediately before communion, Behold the lamp of God, and held the host in his hand. This little host, this little host in the Eucharist, this is immense. This is um, uh, unspeakable greatness, majesty, holiness, love. Mm. And so the angels prostrate themselves, and we human beings, we are so insensitive, we are often so uh, proud and standing and taking our lot as we take common food, and then justifying ourselves, our lack of respect, saying, oh, this only important the interior attitude. So this is pharisaic. This is like an attitude of the Pharisees, the contrary. So some, someone accuse us who want to receive our Lord kneeling as Pharisees. Uh, you are observing only the, the exterior uh, rules. But on the contrary, they are Pharisees because they are uh, proud. They don't bend their knees before our incarnated Lord. They, they uh, are not leaving the union between the exterior law and the interior attitude. And so this is Pharisaic and scribes. And we are followers of the saints. Amen. We are bending our knees before our Lord. We are imitating the angels in heaven. 
Amen. Bishop Snyder, uh, you just remind me, there's a section in, in Cardinal Ratzinger's book, The Spirit, Spirit of the, of the Liturgy, Liturgy, where he quotes St. Anthony of Egypt, and he says that St. Anthony of Egypt saw the devil in the desert, and he said that he noticed that the devil had no kneecaps. And it's in the <laughs> book, and I found that, and basically Cardinal Ratzinger wrote that the, the devil, you know, St. Anthony of Egypt says the devil has no kneecaps because he refuses to bend his knee. My question to you is, do you find that as you have come to the West from, from Russia, from, from having been a bishop in Russia and seeing persecution there and seeing the revival of Christianity, have you seen that the practices in the West have become very liberal? And have you seen, for example, Terry and me have seen it. I was a teenager in the 70s, young adult in the 80s. Mm -hmm. A lot of liturgies became anthropomorphic. They became man-centered instead of Christ-centered. Mm -hmm. Have you seen that as the case as well? Of course, the anthropocentrism, the man-centered, is the cause, to my opinion, mm -hmm. for the lack of faith, yeah. the lack of respect and reverence. We, we don't take our Lord incarnated as seriously. We, don't, we behave ourselves in the liturgy as if Christ has been not incarnated, as, 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 as if God is not important. So uh, sometimes I remember the words of the Psalm 113, where it is written, Not to us, our Lord, not to us, but to your name give glory. This beautiful expression of the Psalm, not to us. But when I sometimes observe such anthropocentric liturgies in Catholic, in some Catholic churches, yes. I, I, there comes to my mind this uh, biblical uh, expression, but I would say this in the contrary sense, that they say, to us our Lord, and to us, and to our name give glory. Well said. Not to your. Yeah, well said. B Bishop, we're going to take a quick break and then come back. But I, I want to ask you, you came out with 12 statements about supporting the family. And I can't get through all 12, but I'm going to ask you after the break, what advice would you give mom and dad who are trying to raise their kids to be fully Catholic and alive and, and you know, whether it's teaching them how to pray? What advice would you give them as a bishop? to survive in a secular world that acts like God doesn't exist. And sometimes, I might add, and I'm just going to be as direct as I can, sometimes it's difficult for a, a, a Catholic families to worship, and are you going to advise them to find a parish that will worship properly? Because there are some out there, and I know I'm not politically correct to say this, but I know I've, with my family I had to go, I had to look around and find a parish that was going to, do it according to the mind of the church, and that's unfortunate. So when we come back, my question is, what advice would you give to mom and dad trying to raise a family in America right now? And folks, you're listening to the Terry and Jesse show. I'm giving away Abbott Boniface interview that we had, a three-hour interview. Uh, this was the, he, he was the last surviving uh, author of the Constitution of the Sacred Liturgy of the Second Vatican Council. You're going to discover the inside story of how the Council's noble ideals for liturgical for reform went astray. And he was also on the implementation of the Second Vatican Council's document on the liturgy. I already told you things like we're supposed to know our parts of the Mass in Latin. That's what the document says. The tr priest is supposed to turn around and say, the Lord be with you. All these things are in that document. How did they not get implemented? Well, Abbot Boniface tells you the whole story, and if you call 877-526-215, and I'm going to give away the first CD, two copies, so they could get you hooked on finding out how we can better worship God in the sacred liturgy. You're listening to the Terry and Jesse Show. When we come back, Bishop Athanasius Snyder is going to talk about advice for you, Mom and Dad, on how to support a family life that's centered on Christ, especially in the Eucharist. Also, I just want to remind everybody, I'm going to be at the Elevate Conference this Friday. Go to ImmaculateHeartRadio.com if you'd like to go. Love to see you there. If you'd like to bring me out to talk about how to evangelize your parish, that's the book I wrote, best-selling book, call 877-526-2151. And again, if you have a question for Bishop Athanasius, i got a long list of people still online, but that number is 888 526 
215. And don't forget, people are still calling about the Spiritual Warfare Conference coming up July 29th and 30th. There's still room. Jesse, your final thought before the break? Yeah. If you want to see where I'm going to be at Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, Thursday, I'm going to be in Orange County. Friday, I'm going to be in Santa Ana. Saturday, I'm going to be in Long Beach. Go to my website, jesseromero.com, jesseromero.com, and uh, you can see exactly where I'm going to be at Thursday, Friday, and Saturday in Southern California. Well said. If you want my schedule, just go to the Terry Jesse Show. It's right on my website, thecatholicrc.org. Now, hear the music, so we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, Bishop Athanasius Snyder will talk about helping you mom and dad to live a more Christ-centered life and to build your family up and to get them to heaven because we know life is short, eternity is forever. Don't hesitate to get that CD set, The Failure of Liturgical Reform, by the last surviving author of the Second Vatican Council by calling 877-526-2151. Don't turn that dial. We're going to come right back. the Terry and Jesse show on Immaculate Heart Radio. Want to join the conversation? Call 888-526-2151. Now here's Terry and Jesse. We're back. This is the Terry and Jesse show. This is the Lord's Gym. We are your spiritual fitness trainers. We are talking with Bishop Athanasius Snyder of Kazakhstan, and we're asking him about, uh, we want to move into now into family life. And, uh, Bishop, here in America, we have, let's just say that Amer- American Catholics, we're feeling the, the persecution, at least the white persecution or white martyrdom uh, from, from our present leadership. We've got elections coming up. Things don't look good for Catholics in this country. It looks like if the persecution is going to continue or intensify uh, with, the ne- with the next president, that I believe is going to win. And so my question to you is, you survived Russia under communism and atheism, and uh, the church survived over there under incredible persecution. What can you tell us, mom and dad, trying to raise Catholic kids, trying to raise a Catholic family, really in a secular culture, in a wasteland, in, in a culture that's become pagan once again, what simple bullets can you give us that Catholic parents need to survive in what I would call a heretical wasteland? Yes, first I would suggest to the uh, Christian Catholic couples that they be aware that their family life is a house church. Mm -hmm. So to try to establish a style of a house church it means that this is a divine constitution of the family, that God gave the family the mission to be a little church, to transmit the faith. The first uh, little church is the family, and even the first priestly seminary is the family. Wow. And so um, the, the, the parents, the first task is to teach the child even from the youngest age the prayers the prayers and then to pray together with the children so that the children growing they can observe and see that uh, that father and mother are kneeling and praying with them and so this is also this is a very beautiful example they will never forget in their life these gestures to seeing their father and their mother kneeling and holding the hands and praying beautiful. and that the same beautiful example they have to give in the church when they go to communion try dear mothers and fathers to receive holy communion with much respect and so kneel down and make a good uh, action of grace and so your children will see this and never forget this is the most powerful lesson for them this is the first and then to teach them uh, the truths of Catholic faith from a very simple uh, catechism. Mm-hmm. Take an old, simple catechism, because these old, simple catechisms, they are always up-to-date, up-to-date, Amen. because they repeat the everlasting truths. And so 
please take these old good catechisms and teach your children in your house uh, some of these truths, repeat them. Then it would be also good sometimes to read to your children a good example of a life of saints, suitable for the children to understand. Mm -hmm. So these are, and then, also very important, to, to choose a good church with a, with a worshipful liturgy. And so even when you have to drive far, Please uh, choose carefully a good uh, liturgy for your children. This is very important. Mm -hmm. Then uh, this would be a good experience. The children will have esteem of this liturgy because uh, even they have to bring some sacrifices in order to participate. And so in my childhood, we had to drive 100 kilometers uh, for the Sunday Mass. But these, uh, these trips I remember very well and remain in my memory as one of the most pleasing trips in my life, the Sunday Mass trips. Mm -hmm. And so this could be also very important. The next, uh, to survive in a pagan society, exactly when in, uh, the, chil the, the fathers and the mothers, they teach the children and about the dangers of the pagan world so and then uh, you have to make um, some uh, I mean uh, some uh, to, to join together with other families so that your children uh, can know other children or young people other young people who have the same aim the same face so they can support each other in the face to to make some family gatherings of good Catholics to support each other. Amen. And uh, so this is, to my opinion, yes. one of the most important steps to protect your children from a new pagan environment. Bishop Athanasius, great advice. If people want to get all your list of things, they can go to our Twitter account, Terry Jesse Show, and get all the rest of that list. Uh, bishop Athanasius, there's another German bishop he said, stop preaching PC Christianity to light. He says, church leaders must teach the true faith, even if it means risking the execution by the media. This is Cardinal Walter Brandmuller. Um, you sound like you're preaching the same thing he's saying. Would you agree with the Cardinal that we've got to stop compromising? Of course, this is very true. And we have to preach the truth. And even the truth will win always. Amen. And the truth is more powerful than the new pagan lies. Huh. Hey, and even some new pagan lies inside the church. We have not to be fearful of this, but fear, we have without fear, courageously, because we know the truth. And uh, the truth gives us the real freedom, the liberty. And this is our victory. So we have to be very, um, in some way, pride of our faith, of our Catholic faith. Amen. Jesse? Bishop, not, Bishop not Snyder? To be, not to be, uh, have, not to have fear right. of this new pagan world. Not uh, to Amen. allow, Amen is uh, right. yield to the intimidation of the new pagan world. Because Christ is with us. Amen. And so Amen. already in the team of the winners, because yes. Christ is in our team. Amen. Team Jesus. Yes. Jesse, we've got a couple minutes left. Yeah, yeah. Bishop Snyder, to me, uh, you're, you're a breath of fresh air Amen. for people that are listening. You sound like the John the Baptist. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you, you sound like a voice in the wilderness. I'm listening here, and I'm almost falling off my chair to hear. It's so fresh. It's so beautiful to hear a bishop talk the way you're speaking with such moral clarity because there's a lot of confusion right now we don't need confusion we need moral clarity and the last thing i want to ask you is bishop is uh do you believe that the prophecies of fatima are starting to manifest in russia with their embracing and, and revival of christianity do you see the fruits of fatima being lived out right now in modern day russia yes our lady told that Russia will convert, and but we don't know exactly 
the I mean the times, but we can observe some signs. Yes. As, as I already yeah. told in the yes. beginning of the sure. here, that uh, we can observe some signs of the conversion of Russia, and so it could be that the process of the conversion of Russia uh, uh, take time. Takes time. Yes. It not occurs uh, suddenly in one moment. No. Right. And so it could be that it's a process. And to my opinion, uh, the full conversion of Russia will be when Russia will be united with the Pope, with the Russian Orthodox Church, will recognize the Pope. Amen. And so this is, to, for me, the, the complete conversion of Russia. Wow. And therefore, this is still to be made. Yes. Bishop Schneider, I'm going to make this available for any of our listeners. If they want a copy of what we just did, free. You just call us at 877-526-215 and get a copy of this. Send it to your your priest, your bishop. This is something that's very inspiring. I've, I've been doing this radio for a long time, but this show I want to make available to all our listeners. You'll get two copies of it. Just help with the shipping. Call 877-526-2151. Bishop, any final thoughts that you want to speak to our listenership, especially mom and dad? We have about a minute and a half, and maybe a blessing for all of our listeners, too. If you don't mind giving an out, a little blessing for us, that would be wonderful. Yes, dear listeners, I would like to encourage you first to thank God for the unspeakable gift of the Catholic faith, Amen. of the true Catholic faith, and please keep this faith. And... Uh, Uh, Do not allow to be uh, confused by no one, even by no priest, no bishop, no cardinal. You have promised Christ the fidelity in the baptism. Please keep this. And so this is the first. And be proud of your Catholic faith. And be courageous. And be witnesses of, of the joy of your Catholic faith. And this joy and, and sureness of your Catholic faith may also uh, bring other people to this really happiness to be Catholic. And so I uh, wish you please remain always faithful. Be faithful unto the death, and our Lord will give you the crown of life. Amen. And so I will give now you a blessing. Yes, please. We've got 20 to, seconds. To all you or your dears to your families, especially to the fathers and mothers and the children. Et benedictio Dei omnipotentis Patris, et fili et Spiritus Sancti descendat super vos, et maniat semper. Amen. Amen. Thanks again. God love you all.